Hello, my drunken Buddhas. Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about authenticity, which is one of my favorite topics because living in an authentic way for me is, is critical to be able to engage with life uh, joyfully and really connect with it at a deep level. Because when we're being inauthentic, there are, it's like those inauthentic behaviors and beliefs and ways of operating create like a block, a barrier between yourself and life, yourself and other people, yourself and yourself. So that's why we're going to be talking about it today. So what is authenticity? Authenticity is a spontaneous and natural mode of being that doesn't come from survival-based conditioning. And that survival-based conditioning comes in two flavors, mainly. One is the fear of being rejected or hurt in some way. So, for example, um, you could be a kid in a classroom and you won't say something because you think all the other kids will laugh at you. You won't say what you really think. You won't admit something you're feeling. Maybe you're, maybe you're feeling sad or afraid and you won't admit it because you, will, you fear that all the other kids will laugh at you and reject you, right? And the other piece of conditioning is that craving, right? To get something that I really, I, re I need to get something, right? And this is the other side of the coin there. That kind of fear and the craving are related. So um, wanting something, for example, could be you want to get to know, to befriend a certain person because you think it'll give you loads of social status, right? So it's like, oh, if I could be friends with that person, that would open up so many doors, I get to know so many other people, I'd get so much approval and acceptance and opportunity. Um, and then you might start behaving in inauthentic ways to secure that, right? So you, that friend might be acting in ways that don't align with your values. They might be have, you know, be being really judgmental and mean about other people, for example, and you might like agree, agree with them. It's like, oh yeah, ha ha ha, you know, going along with them because you want to secure that social status and those opportunities, right? So these are kind of examples of this conditioning that prevent us from being authentic. And when we're acting authentically, those conditionings are absent. And instead, there's a, there's a, there's a free flow of being. And you could summarize it in this way. Authenticity doesn't care what happens. You just behave how you behave and let the chips fall where they may. And, and that's cool with you. That's fine. So it's not, it's behavior that's not looking towards and, and fearing a particular outcome or desiring a particular outcome. It is what it is. And then whatever happens after that is fine. That's why it's so hard. This is like, this is really, authenticity is not some trivial thing where it's like, oh, I'm just, I'm just being authentic or whatever. It's a really deep and tricky and difficult topic because these conditionings go, go so deep, right? So an example could be for uh, Jesus in the crucifixion, right? That's, that's some serious authenticity right there where Jesus was going to be crucified and they go, just renounce your religion and we won't crucify you. And he's like, nah. He, he, that, in that moment, Jesus doesn't care what happens. He's just being what's true for him, letting the chips fall where they may. And now just think about what you might have done in that position, right? <laughs> I would have renounced my flipping religion. <laughs> That's why Jesus is more authentic than I am. So what does it kind of look like? Well, it's actually quite hard to say. Authenticity is, is quiet. It doesn't announce itself. And it's actually impossible to know up front or in another person if they're really being authentic because it doesn't actually have to be any particular way. It can, it can appear anyway, so long as it's not based in that fear slash craving sort of conditioning, um, then you can call it to some, some degree authentic. Um, there's a tendency to want to, a lot, a lot of times people get called authentic when they're being quite loud or brash or bold or being like honest but often in quite a, a, a mean or judgmental way. And I, I would be a little suspicious of that. Maybe they are being authentic, but it's also possible that they've learned these behaviors in order because they get attention and things like that, right? When, when these kinds of people do that. So I'd watch out for that one. It's easier to spot inauthenticity. This is, um, I'm just gonna kind of read from a bit of a list here. That inauthenticity is repressing emotions. So you might hold back tears or fear or anger 
for example, in order to maintain that approval. Uh, repressing your expression, so just not saying things that you kind of want to say, uh, not just being truthful about your opinion about things. Um, lying of all kinds, so even subtle little white lies, just to help things along a little bit is kind of a kind of an inauthenticity. And that's a way of manipulating others subtly. Uh, playing, playing it small, not engaging with life, kind of hiding away is a, is a kind of inauthenticity, really, because uh, you're doing it to, exactly to just to stay safe rather than to as a true expression of yourself. People pleasing, agreeing with others, going with the crowd, like saying what you want people to hear, all this kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with any of this at all. And everyone does it. I do it. It's, it's not like this needs to be stopped or, or, or somehow banished from our lives. It's just, I want to call out what it is. It's coming from these, these survival-based conditionings. So why are we not actually authentic? Why do we behave in these inauthentic ways that are painful? Because it's worth pointing out, as I said at the beginning, that it's a lot of effort to control and manipulate and to hold in our expression, right? Because a, a huge freeze response, a huge shutdown response has to come in to hold us back from expressing ourselves authentically, right? That's probably another great angle of what authenticity is, is this actually, you know, you, you experience the physiological repression of all these parts that I just, just, just described, right? An emotion wants to come up, it's like, whoosh, gets shut down. An, ex an opinion wants to come out, whoosh, gets shut down. You want to go out and, and like talk to that girl or that boy, it's like, whoosh, gets shut down, right? You want to dance in a certain way, whoosh, there's all the huge amounts of energy uh, uh, required to pull you in to keep you small. And that's what's so painful. There's this thing trying to get out, this authentic expression's here. And then there's, bam, there's this repression coming in, holding it back because it feels like it's unsafe for you to do so. And, and the tension between the two is agonizing and uh, requires a huge amount of control and manipulation in order to maintain. And that's why being inauthentic is so painful. And the reason we do this is because as children, we desperately needed, our only concern was maintaining our attachment with our caregivers, right? So with our mother or father or whatever the situation uh, might be, we learned quickly that perhaps certain expressions were not welcome, right? Anger, maybe, maybe mum or dad would get really annoyed at us and stop giving us love if we got angry. So we learned to repress that, right? And we have these, so we have these ways of seeking approval through presenting ourselves in certain ways and getting attention also through certain ways. So we could either maybe be quiet. There's the more repressive side of things, being quiet, um, not expressing yourself authentically in order to maintain the approval so you don't rock the boat. On the flip side, there's ways of getting attention that I haven't talked about so much. Um, this is where people who make a lot of noise, they draw attention to themselves a lot. You know, they they dress, maybe dress in very, very over the top ways, which is not necessarily inauthentic, but when it's coming from that desire for attention, there's some degree of that inauthenticity there because it's coming, I'm just trying to get something through, <laughs> through dressing in a certain way or appearing in a certain way, right? Again, nothing wrong with it. Just trying to, to call out, describe what's going on here. So those are the two wings of it. We, you know, as children, we needed the approval and the attention and we, sort of contorted and twisted ourselves into different shapes in order to do what we needed to do to get those things. So how do we then start to develop authenticity? Um, essentially, you need to turn towards the root of the issue, which is that fear and craving. There are these very, very deep energies or drives within us trying to keep us safe. And we need to turn our attention towards them, bring them to the surface, allow them to be processed and uh, integrated, right? And this is, this is long-term work. This is, this is difficult stuff, but it's very, very, very worth it. And it's worth noting that there's, um, there's many layers to this because you can't ever really be fully authentic. It's kind of like a curve that asymptotically approaches the, the zero, the y-axis. You It kind of gets infinitely close, you can get closer, closer, closer. You can never quite get there. It kind of continues forever. Um, and there are many layers that you've got to work through. And at each point, there's kind of a certain maximum authenticity that you can develop. And you have to really fully own 
where you're at at each stage. So you have to be like authentically inauthentic. <laughs> Let me illustrate this as an example. So say you have uh, a desire to like record music and play it in front of people, for example. That, from that standpoint, that's very authentic to want to do that. So you might be afraid of doing that, right? And so you could work through some of that fear so that you could go on stage and you could play your music. And that would be really the most authentic expression for you at that moment. However, it's possible further on down the line, as you do more work and dive deeper, you kind of realize that that desire to play music in front of people was actually really a desire for attention and, and the approval. You wanted people, you didn't, we didn't just want to play music in front of people, you wanted them to love your music and say, oh, wow, you're so, your music's so fantastic, you're so great, right? And you realize that maybe some of the music you were playing was, you know, you changed it a bit, you made it a bit more palatable so that you would get that approval. Or maybe you made it really, really weird and bizarre just so that you, you could, uh, people would uh, think your music's, you know, so amazing in that way, right? There's all sorts of subtle ways the mind will kind of work. And then at that deeper level, you can suddenly see that it was perhaps an inauthentic behavior. So on a certain level, it's authentic. And then later on at a certain level, it's actually inauthentic. And you have kind of got to run, run this zigzag path through the layers, just feeling into what is most authentic for you in any given moment and moving towards that. But, but then staying open to the fact that at a later date, that will probably change and, and there's sort of deeper layers and levels of authenticity will open up. Um, to be to be discovered, which is joyous. And the way you kind of do this is by really investigating your fear and repression at each layer. So feeling into that need for approval, attention, validation, and so on. You can almost like imagine, what, what would you have to feel if you didn't get that, right? What pain would you have to feel? And then feeling into that pain and integrating it which I've talked about uh, in many other videos and, and, and blogs and on my website and things. So you can go and check those out if you want to learn more about how to actually do that process. And then also feeling into that part of you that's holding back, right? There's, there's often, I call it the force field, this, this energy within me that's holding me back from expressing myself in certain ways, from behaving in certain ways. And just being really gentle and loving with that, learning how to bring it up and just let it, let it melt over time if you just hold it in just the right way. That, that, that holding can start to relax and then you notice being able to express yourself more freely uh, around other people or on YouTube or whatever it might be. So play with that, good luck. Uh, any questions, just leave me a comment and uh, much love. See you later, peace, bye.